In this problem, what we're trying to find is so we're trying to find the absolute maximum and minimum values if we have this function of two variables that looks like this. And so I graphed it here, and basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to find these values, but it's on a closed interval. So here's our x and y plane, so something like here, here, and here. So these are the only values that we care about. Sure, there's some sort of maximum up here, but we don't care about it. We care about what's in this area, right? So we can just disregard everything else. And the way I like to think about it is that this area down here is sort of the dance floor that you're looking down on um, from the top of here. And so now let's find out how we're going to find these maximum and minimum values. So we're basically going to break this up into three different steps. First, we're going to find the critical points that are within this area. Then we're going to find the critical points along these um, exterior lines. And then we're going to find the values at the endpoints. So sometimes people don't do these second and third steps. They just do the inside part. But it's absolutely crucial that if you have a closed interval, that you check the endpoints. It's sort of like if you have a 2D graph and you have some sort of graph like this, say where it's bounded by A and B, and you just say, oh, here's a minimum, and that's it. You also have a maximum up here and a maximum up here, or absolute maximum and absolute uh, minimum. You have to check your bounds. So the first step is to take the partial derivative of this uh, function with respect to x and y. So that's pretty simple. Uh, 4x plus 2y minus 6, and you have 2y plus 2x minus 4. And then when you're trying to find critical points, those occur when both the partial with respect to x and the partial with respect to y equals 0. Right? Both of them have to equal zero at these x and y values, not just one, both. So um, we have a system of equations here, and when we have a system of equations, what I like to do is if I see that there are two parts of it that can just cancel out and then leave us with just x's, that's what we're going to do. So let's rewrite it so it looks a little more matched up. Now let's subtract them. So we get 2x. These just cancel out. Negative 6 minus negative 4 is minus 2 equals 0. So now it's just super easy if you say that x equals 1. Now if we plug it back into either one of these equations, we can solve for what y equals. So 4 times 1 plus 2y minus 6 equals 0. We get 4 plus 2y equals 6. So we just get that y equals 1. Cool. So that is the only critical point within this area. And we want to try to find the maximum and minimum value. So what we have to do is we have to take these x and y uh, coordinates and we have to plug them back into this function to find th their value at that point. So um, f of 1 comma 1 is 2 plus 1 squared plus 2 which ends up equaling 0. So that's 0. Now for step 2 we're going to be checking out these three lines here because it's possible for critical values to be on here. So let's start off with an easy one. This line can be defined by x is always 0, but y can be any number from 0 to 4. So let's just say that y can be y. So this is the same thing as saying f of 0 and y. x will always be 0, and y can just stay y. So we're going to make a new function, which we call g of x, which is equal to f of 
of 0, y, where x equals 0 and y equals y. So what we do is we just substitute 0 for every single x in this equation, and y, we just leave y. So 2 times 0 squared plus y squared plus 2 times 0 times y equals ugly 0. Minus 6 times 0, minus 4y, plus 5. And we end up getting this cancels, this cancels, this cancels, y squared minus 4y plus 5. All right. So now that we just have an equation in terms of y, what we can do is just take the derivative to find any critical points. So g prime of y is 2y minus 4. We set that equal at 0. We get that y equals 2, and because we've already said that x is equal to 0 at every single point along here, we're going to say that the corresponding x value is 0. So at 0, 2, we have another critical point. So what we do, let's put it up here, x equals 0, y equals 2. We're going to plug that bad boy back into our original equation f of 0, comma 2. And we end up with that equaling 1. So now we have to figure out the critical values of this line here. This is another pretty easy line. It's sort of like uh, the first, this part, but switched. Because y is always 0 along this, but x can be anywhere from 0 to 4. So let's just keep it at x. So x comma 0. Let's make another new equation called g of x, which is f of x comma 0, where x is equal to x and y is equal to 0. So let's plug those things in. We end up with 2x squared minus 6x plus 5. Now let's take that derivative. 4x minus 6 set equal to 0 we get that our x is 3 halves, and our y has to be 0 because that's what this entire line is. So 3 halves is like right here. That's where we have another critical point. So x equals 3 halves, y equals 0. If we plug that into our equation, we get that that equals 1 half. I'm going to stop plugging stuff in. It's too time consuming. Now we need to find the critical points of this line here. Um, you can find this line by looking at this point and this point, but um, honestly, you can you just see that when um, x equals 0, y equals 4, so you should say that 4 minus x equals equals to y. You can test that with this other point here because when x equals 4, y equals 0. Cool. So that's our equation here. So uh, you best believe we're just going to make another g of x where f is going to be x because it changes. And our y is going to be 4 minus x because we found this equation for it. The whole point of this, like, switch around the uh, equation so that you have different um, variables in it is so that you can get an equation with just one variable in it. That means that we keep our x the same, 2x squared plus 4 minus x squared plus 2 times x times 4 minus x minus 6x minus 4 times 4 minus x plus 5. And this, let's just simplify it out, ends up being 2x, or x squared, minus 2x 
plus 5. Alright, now we're going to take that derivative. 2x minus 2 set equal to 0. x equals 1. If x equals 1, then if we plug it back into our equation for y, we get that y equals 3. You should make sure that just because you see something that is kind of the same as one of the original critical values, to not just assume it's going to be the same, because it won't, like in this situation. So then you just plug this into this equation to find its value, and its value is going to be 4. You might think that you're done at this point, but you still have to solve for these endpoints. That's step number three. So this endpoint here is 4, 0. This endpoint is 0, 0. And this endpoint is 0, 4. So with this, you don't have to do anything special other than just plug it into here. So f of 0, 4 f of 0, 0, and f of 4, 0. So, we'll just solve those real quick. We end up with 5, 5, and 13. So, we can see that our absolute max value equals 13 and our absolute min value is 0. And that is how you solve this problem. Make sure you don't put in the points instead of the values. It's, a very, it's very important that you carefully read through the question because you can lose um, points that are very trivial just because you didn't read the question. But, yep, 13 and 0. Ooh, it's the end screen. Click on one of these links to be directed to that playlist. And don't forget to subscribe!